Hello guys, welcome to your 18th tip of the week with Helping Hands. This week we're talking about flanking. So what is flanking? Basically, flanking is the movement of a unit to attack an enemy from the side, in a nutshell, basically. So, I've got an MG42 set up over here, but we're going to pretend we didn't know it's there. So what you do, first of all, if you're going to flank, don't ever blob your units. That's the number one rule of flanking. If you attack with all your units from one angle, it's going to end badly. So you need to split your units up. So here we go. So let's just say, you know, we were going to try and move over to this position, but we wanted to, because we, we, we have an idea there's an MG42 in this area, but we're going to attack from different angles. So we can, send the, we can send one rifle forward, you know, one probing rifle, and then we'll send another one around the side because it looks clear. And then we found the MG. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these rifles that got suppressed in cover, and then I'm going to move around the sides with these rifles while this rifle is taking the flak. And um, by doing this, you've got to be careful, watch the MG's line of art. You can see the MG turning towards a certain squad as well, so you've got to be careful. And there you go, we flank the MG42, and he'll be either be forced to retreat or lose the MG, and then he's lost the ground. So, pra practically, this is flanking in a nutshell, just outmaneuvering out maneuvering the enemy. That's the basics. Now, let's get on to... Um, what units can de de detect flanks? So the first thing, let's go over to the Axis. So you've got a couple of units here. Probably not all of the units that can de detect flanks, but I've just picked the most obvious ones. So obviously the infrared half track here, as you can see, you can see this big green cone on your mini map, and this is a big indication of like where an enemy movement might be. So as we can see here, we've detected that there is a rifleman squad and an LT, as the cone will come back around in a second. Um, Let's just watch this happen. So here you go. Here comes the, the cone from the infrared half track. And then it'll pick up enemy movement. So here you can see there's there's an enemy unit here. And this will buy us enough time to maybe reposition our MG42s or whatever. So then at, at, or, or mine up a flank that we think those guys are going to move towards. Okay. Now also you have... Um, let's turn this half track away. To show you what these... So all these three units here. So the OKW Cougar Wagon. The 222. And the... Um, the uh, the half track over here, the two five one half track, all have infantry awareness. Uh, on the these two units, they cost ten munitions. On the Kubel wagon, it's free, I believe. So what you do with this unit is that you pop the ability, and now for eighteen seconds or so, you can see the enemy through the fog of war. So you, got, you can't see them like you can with an infrared half track, but as you can see on the mini map, you can see those red dots, right? We go. We, and then if you go into the tactical map, you can see what kind of units they are. So they show up as riflemen. You know, you can see there's a rifleman there, right? But if you go down to here, in the minimap, you can't tell what unit is. And as the ability ends, you lose the sight. So it's a good idea to pop these abilities on every so often, just to, in case you're expecting enemy movement in certain areas. And this could buy you enough time to deal with flanks. So they're the access units that I can think of that are good. Oh, sorry. Also the sniper as well. So the sniper's good to detect flanks because you can have him on hold fire. This is the same with all enemy, all uh, all snipers and all camo units as well. So you get, you know, you get the unit up close, and you have it on hold fire. So then you can give yourself some line of sight to see where the enemy movement is. He won't know that you've see, he see, you know, that you've seen him. So therefore, you can again, you can prepare and deal with the flank that might ha occur. Again, over here, you've got like another camo units. You've got obviously the sniper, the the um. The Soviet sniper, like partisans for the Soviets that can camo. Um, and also, so the, the Soviet sniper can drop a flare in the sky as well. So you can drop a flare in the sky. Like so. And this flare will reveal an area. There you go. You can see it dropping down there. And it gives you, you know, you can, therefore you've got line of sight. You can spot again, see where enemy movement's happening. Again, with the Soviets, uh, the conscripts can drop tripwire flares. So if an enemy unit hits that, a big flare will drop it in the sky. Again, that'll give you a big alert. You know, in case an enemy, um, you, you will find uh, enemy units that are like, moving through a certain area. So it, again, buys you enough time. Over here, we have Pathfinder. The Pathfinder Beacon also reveals enemy units. Uh, I've got the Major here because, again, he has a recon run. So that will also, you know, line of sight, give you enemy unit positions. And so we have the M20 as well as along with the T70 over here. Now, these units, if once they've reached, especially with the T70. So let's get the T70 over here, right, down the road. We put the war on. Now we'll vet the T70 up, right? So we'll do the selection, uh, owner, no, actually, wrong thing, miscellaneous, combat, sorry, veteran, C. So we get one. So you see, then we put now, then he gets recon mode. So we see a little bit, so we see extra line of sight. We give him another rank. 
and it's the third rank that gives him the extra buff there. You, you can see the difference. So now he's vet three, and the T set becomes very good at providing big LOS all around the map. Now you can see the same thing over here with the two two with this um, with the uh, M20. M20 doesn't have recon mode, but he also gets, he also has a massive uh, sight bonus. So again, we'll do the same thing here. Combat, veterancy, add one vet rank. There you go. You saw the increase in the distance there. Add another rank. And I think it's vet three. Okay, maybe not. So only vet one, he gains the sight bonus. So I didn't, I, even I didn't know that. So I learned something there. So there you go. Vet one, M20 gains that sight bonus, uh, which is quite nice. So there you go. So again, you know, try to keep these units alive. Like the T70 and the M20 will be very useful in late game because they do provide provide great LOS and give you like again the time to anticipate flanks. Brits again, you know, any unit can stealth. So the sniper as well as infiltration commanders, normal commanders, that kind of thing. And then we have the Valentine again. Valentine is the exact same kind of thing as like the infrared half track, but his code is a lot bigger, so it'll give you a lot more time and give you, you know, give you a better, clearer understanding of the battlefield. As you can see, we've got RES that's been spotted. So again, you get lots of time to anticipate enemy flanks. So that's just an overview on how to, uh, you, you know, some units that can give you enough, buy you enough time to be able to deal with flanks. Let's go into uh, how to. Other, other abilities to help anticipate with flanking. So, uh, for instance, um, just general recon runs. Uh, you've got flares from like Oka, the OKW commander where you can drop some flares in the sky. You've got, uh, for the Brits, you could put the command vehicle uh, ability on it like your Bren gun and that'll have a recon plane that goes around. So that's like, another thing you could do. Um, and so, and, and so, those kinds of abilities, okay? Now let's go on to how to set up multiple flanks. So, as you can see in this original demonstration here, we attack from three different angles. Now, in lower skill games, uh, probably you could get away with attacking from maybe one angle, or maybe one or two different angles to, de to defeat your opponent. In higher skill games, you need to set up more multiple flanks to succeed. So, if you ever watch big ESL games with like Dev M, like you know, because he's always he's always really good with his USF rifleman play, you see him come from multiple angles at all times. So, for instance, on a map like this, on Angerville, like you know, say that the MG42 was, you know, the Axis Army was over here trying to defend this fuel point, he would be coming around the side with a rifle here, up, down here through the road here, he'll have one coming from here, one from here, and then like an, maybe an LT and a captain around the side. So he'll have like four flanks at any, you know, at one time. That is how you're going to be more successful at wiping your enemy off if you use multi, if you attack with multiple flanks, because it's going to be increasingly difficult for the Axis player or even the Allied player trying to deal with flanks to try and hold their line if they're being attacked from multiple angles. Now, um, to assist you with flanking, um, the, uh, sorry, for, uh, the Axis or, or the Allies, if they're trying to defend against count, uh, um, countering flanking, they'll probably put like down like barbed wire and mines and stuff. So, for instance, you know, a good Axis player against like someone like Dev M, he would be putting like mines here, mines here, like and maybe double MG, MG fo fo focusing this way. He would have wired up all the green cover um, so that it would make it increasingly difficult for the enemy to, to approach. And he would have like. For instance, that maybe a sniper forward on hold fire to provide the LOS that's needed uh, to see where the enemy is moving, right? So that would be um, a very good defense. Um, now, if you were trying to flank in and you know you're up against a really good player that's defending very well like this, you would want to push up with sweepers first, for instance. So you'd get your RE's out, you would have them on, um, you'd, you'd push them forward first, you spot the spot any mines, then maybe get a vehicle to quickly shoot the mine to clear it immediately, then you could push in quicker. Because what will happen is that if you, with an RE for instance, or any infantry unit that can sweep, um, you spot the mine and then you take the time to sweep, your opponent's going to see that and then he's got time to counter you trying to, you know, uh, uh, get rid of his mine, right? So the best thing to do is maybe detect the mine, shoot it, and then quickly rush in, or maybe even just don't even swoop the mine, just push in as fast as possible. Another important uh, thing to talk about with flanking is that if you're going to flank in any position, and you want you, you basically want to do it as stealthily as possible as well. So um, first of all, like commando units or anything that can camo, you want to sneak up. You want to, for instance, if you had a and a parson squad, you want to like hop from cover to cover, getting closer and closer to your opponent, and then maybe lobbing the grenade on the MG before revealing your position. Um, like using smoke as well. 
and little other abilities that could help you um, succeed in flanks. So, for instance, the MG42 is facing this way. You know it's there because you've spotted it with like a you know a recon plane or whatever. You smoke the position, then you push in as soon as the smoke lands. That's a good that's a good time to flanking, uh, flank in. Um, oh, I just thought of something that I forgot. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, oh yeah, and. Uh, be very careful to not, if you're trying to flank in a, an opponent and get right around the enemy lines. So, for instance, if you've got your rifle and you wanted to flank right this way around, don't touch this point if this is an enemy hands. Because as soon as you touch this point, your opponent will be alerted by announcement saying, oh, the enemy is trying to take our sector or whatever, right? So then he's immediately alerted to your presence over there. Try and not give the game away. So if you were flanking an axis position over here, you get your rifle, and then you'd keep going around this side here. You'd keep skirting around the side and not touching the point. And then you'd engage the enemy. Because if you went around and, and, and grabbed the cart off, he, like I said, he'd be alerted. Then he will turn his, his units to deal with that. But if you come in, like, stealthily through the side without touching the sector, then you could get away with it, right? Um, I think... So yeah, uh, I think you know that's pretty much I've summed it up quite uh, quite quickly there actually. Um, basically, it's flanking. You got to attack from multiple angles. Try and do it stealthily. Uh, use smoke and any other abilities. Try and get your tanks to take out certain vehicles and stuff. Um, I'm just w uh, waffling on now. Uh, yeah, just and then you know as a defender against multiple flanks, mines are crucial. Uh, oh, one more thing. MG42. So let's say if you ran into an MG42 as an allied player and the MG d suppressed you and you retreated back, right? Now, an, a noob or like a, a fairly average skill Axis player wouldn't reposition his MG because they would just think, right, I'm, I'm quite content with my MG being here. Or for instance, you've got an MG in a building, you're going to leave it there. Um, you know, you're trying to hold a cut off. You're just going to, and then you become predictable. And then that becomes a lot easier for any player to flank that and succeed in flanking because you, you know, he, know he knows that you're going to leave your MG in the same spot each time so it'll become a lot easier for him to flank so as an Axis person or sorry you know if you're, whoever you are allied or Axis trying to defend with MGs or even pack crews or whatever reposition all the time so for instance you got that MG let's quickly grab it for these guys so we got this MG we suppress an enemy unit then we want to repack Right, so let's say, for instance, this would this is like a very easy way to do you know counter noobs for instance in a game. So let's say you you had your MG facing this way, right, and you suppress something. The obvious next move for your opponent would be to come up this road and flank the left there. So then after you've suppressed and retreated that unit, what you do, you'd wait until the enemy is 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 gone because if you pack up, um, while the enemy is still within your vision. He will see you pack up, right? And then he will know that his the MG is no longer going to be in the exact same spot. So what you want to do is you want to pretend that you're going to leave the MG there. So you, you get so you you force a retreat of the unit, and then the retreat unit goes away. Once the enemy's unit's out of sight, that's when you pack up. You pack you, you you take the MG to pack away, and then like you, you all right. So then I assume right, the opponent's probably going to try and flank my position next time. So I'm going to pull my MG back, and I'm going to face it this way, over here, right. So then he's now ready to deal with that potential flank from a new angle. And your opponent will probably will come for him from that angle. Now he may come in from the north, but then that, that's where you put a minefield down. You put like a cheap, like maybe a couple of anti-infantry anti mines for like 50 munitions. One patch would do. Um, you know, if he's going to have to come round there, he's going to hit the mines or he's going to have to sweep them. And if he tries to sweep them, you're going to see it. Um, as the mines will be revealed, and that again will buy you enough time to then turn, maybe turn your MG around, or maybe get some grenadiers over there to deal with that. So always try and reposition. Same thing with pack crews and stuff. If you do end up, if you are getting smoked, so let's say you are the Axis player, you have this MG42, and smoke falls on your MG42. Best thing to do is, is pack up as quickly as you can, try and reposition. If you know that your opponent is coming in with a huge force, it may be best to retreat immediately. You know, it's best, you know, if you, if you know that you can't hold out against this smoke push, you know, don't, like, risk leaving your unit there to get destroyed. Best pack, you know, either retreat if you know it's going to be a big push, or, um, just, 
unpack your energy and then quickly replace it. Then maybe get some units up forward to then deal with the the you know the enemy movement, or maybe quickly maybe pull out a a, um, a minefield where he just smoked because he's going to try and push that exact position. So it's going to be very difficult to do that in that short space of time. But you might have pioneers nearby, so that's an idea. Um, anything else that I can think of? Yeah, like. Smoke, smoking and flanking just come in hand in hand. It makes, it, um, and I've just talked about this, but I, I really think not enough players use smoke when they flank. And basically, it enables like another flanking route totally open for you, right? So an MG42 might be looking down that route, right? He might be locked, like for instance, MG here, and he's locked down this route because he's pacing that way. You smoke it and you push with a rifle and a sweeper, that route is totally open to you now because. You know, the MG42 can't suppress you. Any mines there are nullified by the sweeper, and then you just run right through. You know, even don't don't even sort stop to sweep. Just run right through with the smoke. And that's a great way to execute a flank. Even even though it's not really a flank, because you're attacking dead on. Because, you know, the MG. But you're you're utilizing all your abilities together. To execute a good push. Uh, I don't think I can think of anything else. I think um, I pretty much summed it up. But uh, I hope that hopefully that was useful, guys. It's just uh, a quick one this week. Uh, there's not really much else I could talk about. You know, just mines. You know, repositioning your MGs, add packs. Uh, maybe use artillery to you know bombard a position that you think is going to get flanked. You know, use your abilities. Yeah, I'm just going to waffle on, keep on. So I'm going to stop now. So thanks for watching. I'll try and get another tip of the week out for you next week. Um, what it's going to be on, I don't know yet. I'll try and decide that. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the stream. Bye-bye.